Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at browsing the 90s internet in 2025. And you're probably thinking, oh, so you just go to the old net. And while yes, that is an excellent solution, this is a little more streamlined and works well with older computers. Here I have the wood grain computer I did a video on not too long ago if you want to check that out. And the neat way I was able to get this online, since I don't have any Ethernet ports here, is I got a Wi-Fi repeater. But the nice part about it is it actually had an Ethernet port, so I was able to connect it to my Wi-Fi and then plug this computer into it. Normally I wouldn't recommend it since it only allows about 20 megabytes a second transfer rate, but for an old computer like this, it doesn't really matter. So it's nice I don't have to use any computers to bridge the internet, you know, from Wi-Fi to Ethernet. I'm able to just uh, plug that into the wall and plug the Ethernet cable into it to the to the network card in the computer and then I'm online. It's so nice to have that. So what makes this possible is a project called ProtoWeb. And it's basically just a proxy that redirects you to an archive of old websites. Well, it's actually more than just an archive. You'll see in a bit later. So the way you set this up on your system, here I'm obviously demonstrating on Windows 98, I'll open up Internet Explorer, and then you go to Tools, Internet Options, Connections, LAN Settings, and then you check Use a Proxy Server. So the address you put in is wayback.protoweb.org, and the port is 7851. And if you want to emulate it at 56K modem speeds, you put 7856 for the port. But I'm going to leave it for on just the full speed here, just for a video demonstration. So now, if I go to a website like uh, Google, check that out. It's the old Google website from 1996. Well... 2000 actually and the neat part about this is it's not just a archive of websites you can actually somewhat use them so google here if you just type in a simple search like uh i don't know dogs and you get a bunch of uh archive websites about dogs so let's just click on a random one here And there's a website about dogs. <laughs> and uh, so let's try another uh, search engine. Another popular one in the 90s was Yahoo. And check that out. That's pretty cool. Let's search up Dell. Dell Alienware 18 Review from CNET. Yeah, I don't think this loaded quite correctly. So if you run into a website that they don't have archived, it'll bring you to this web page here. And it says you found a website we haven't restored yet. And the neat part is, is that you can uh, just continue through the old net. They have like a little widget here, I guess you could call it. And it'll just uh, redirect you through the old net. And we also have Frog Find, which is uh, made by Action Retro. If you haven't watched his videos, definitely uh, look up Action Retro on YouTube. But if you want to go to like the main page, they call it the iNode Gateway, you can click here. And we have a page that renders really nice in Internet Explorer here. And it's basically everything that you can do with this proxy. And here we have all the search engines. Uh, we already looked at Google and Yahoo. What's Comet Search? I, I actually never heard of this one. I'm not old enough to know this. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, keyboard. You, you can't make the search too specific because I don't think anything will come up. Yeah, and here's some searches for keyboard. But let's say if you looked up something that you just know doesn't exist in the 90s, like chat GPT. Yeah, no results found. That's that's not surprising. You can't expect 
it to have a result for that, just because this is still searching archives. But the really cool part about this is you have live websites with like live content, they call it. So there's things like Wikipedia here. So we'll just uh, go to Wikipedia and it looks like a pretty old web page. I don't think these are all from the same year. And check this out. So we can actually search up here and search up something else. How about iMac? Okay, it wants us to, wants to redirect us. And there we go. And check it out, it's talking about the new M1 or M3 M4 iMac. Yeah, 2024. So you could actually fire up an old computer connected to the internet and put in this proxy and completely use Wikipedia without any issues. Well, I say without any issues. I haven't tried this extensively, but how about zip disks? Okay, redirect to zip drive. Uh, the page is a little bit broken. If I probably had a newer version of Internet Explorer, it would probably work better. Here we have Internet Explorer 5. I think 98 can go up to Internet Explorer 6. We have some photos here and a description about zip drives. Really cool to get that on this old web browser, on this old computer. So back to the main page here. Another cool live content website is the Weather Channel. Here we have a nice old weather channel here. And I think you go to uh, the weather, go figure. And let's pick a random state. It actually does get my location, but it's a little bit off. It, it's The degrees are probably like four or five degrees off. All right, so let's take a look at Buffalo, New York. And we even get some old style ads up here, which is really neat. So right now in Buffalo, New York, uh, today is Thursday. It says it's a high of 29 and a low of 27, and there's some snow. And taking a look at my phone here, you can see the high for today is 38, and the low is 27. And it says it's 29 degrees right now, which it says 28 on here. So that is pretty close. I'm not sure what server it's going on. That The weather app on the iPhone goes through uh, the weather channel, so... It kind of makes sense to compare it to that, but I, I kind of doubt that this is going through the Weather Channel servers. And my favorite part about this whole project is probably the website Warpstream. And pretty much what Warpstream is, it's a YouTube type website that works on these old web browsers through the proto web proxy and it'll actually allow you to play back some youtube videos now you don't get the whole youtube uh library you get some people that were okay with their videos being uploaded to here which is thankfully a lot of the good channels i watch so we'll just go to the channel section we have the 8-bit guy computer clan hurricane mods we got to watch an LGR video just because, well, we're using a, a wood grain PC here, so it would only be fitting. And you just uploaded a video today of a modern computer, which I have yet to watch that. Let's take a look at this video he made of the HP Mini 1000 netbook. I like that video quite a bit. And I have Real Player installed because it seemed to be the best option for playing back these videos. I wasn't able to get... Windows Media Player to work or Flash Player, but I was able to get Real Player. So let's try 128K. There's different quality settings depending on your system and internet speed. This is only 120 megahertz and it has 64 megabytes of RAM, so you can't expect smooth video playback. <laughs> Nice 
I can about guarantee there's some memories cropping up for many of you watching this. Yeah, greetings and welcome to this LGR thing. Looking back at the HP Mini 1000, which was one of the most popular laptop computers in 2009. So specifically, it was categorized not as a notebook, but a netbook. A subcategory of sub-notebook. Sort of a re... Yeah, this computer is definitely struggling with this, but... Again, this is a very low-end Windows 98 computer. If you had a 400 megahertz processor or maybe a you know, 700 megahertz, it would be way better than this. And there's actually a support guide here to kind of help you get started in getting videos to play. So here are the configurations recommended for a Windows 95, 98 ME computer. And it says... Uh, at least 90 megahertz and it says 166 megahertz is recommended 128 megabytes of RAM minimum yeah we have 64 here so let's just not look at that <laughs> and Internet Explorer 5.5 or 6 recommended which I think it's just uh, yeah this is 5.0 and if you scroll down you get XP era through 7 and yeah, that's 600 megahertz to one gigahertz, obviously because it's a heavier browser and stuff. And yeah, you can even run this on the PlayStation 3 if you desired. So going back to what I mainly made this video about is to browse the 90s internet uh, through ProtoWeb. So let's try a bunch of websites and see what they have, uh, what they have saved and archived. And if they don't, we're gonna continue through the old net, and then we can still see the website. So let's just try a bunch of random sites. Uh, eBay. Nope. Let's take a look at eBay in 1996, which that was eBay in 1996, I guess. Uh, Amazon. Let's go through the old net. Huh. That's actually a pretty nice looking website for being in the 90s. It has some nice skeuomorphism going on. Some nice tabs on top. Uh, we have some Motorola razors, which I didn't think they were that old. I thought they were early 2000s. All right then. Yeah, this, this renders pretty much exactly how it should. Uh, we'll go to Dell. That is certainly an interesting looking website. And I'm not going to go too in depth to each of the websites just because uh, it would take a lot of time to go through every product and stuff that they have. Uh, Sony. Nope. It's in a new location. Okay, so it just has a link here. Interesting, okay. What about ask.com? Because wasn't that like Ask Jeeves? There it is. Yeah, it's loading this pretty slow, but I think it's gonna eventually load up all the pictures here. What about Gateway? Would it be gateway2000.com or just gateway.com? I'm gonna try gateway.com it is no way related to gateway 2000 okay so it's probably gateway 2000.com there we go we got a nice cow here <laughs> that's uh quite the website all right we'll just try a few more here what about I don't know, mcdonalds.com. That is very red. Uh, click on the golden arches to continue. Um, okay. Yeah, that's, that's not working correctly. As you saw, we weren't coming across very many websites that ProtoWeb actually had. We're just going through the old net. But you have to go through a full index of the websites they have. And it's kind of categorized at the beginning. Oh yeah, Olda Vista. Forgot about that. It's a pretty neat website. 
Pringles.com. Now that is something else. Huh, here's the website for 7-Eleven. So that'll do it for today's video. If you want to check this out, definitely check out the link in the description to get started. And you can learn everything else you want to know about this. I love that it has the old net as a quick link there, like a little widget on the page that'll redirect you to the site that is archived. So yeah, I definitely think this is a cool project and I would recommend you uh, take a look at it and try it yourself on whatever old devices you may find laying around that you might want to get online. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.